So what's clinician knowledge of activity-based funding like? Really, this is limited. And over the last two years, I guess I relate to you some of the comments and experiences that have come back to me. Initially, it started with things like, I've been hearing about this for years, is it really coming in now? Or is this just another cost-cutting type exercise? Or the time constraint opinions of, oh, it's more paperwork, or I don't have time for this, I'm too busy taking care of my patients. Some clinicians worry about interference with patient management and worry that they won't be able to give the best treatments. And my personal favourite from a junior colleague wondered if ABF was the new MSA. <laughs> so this is a real issue. There are other potential barriers to change along the way. Obviously resistance to change with any strong culture and, and hospital structure and clinician culture uh, is very strong and takes a while to change. With increasing pressures, with service delivery, increasing patient loads, the swell of medical students coming through, clinicians have less time. And so asking them to do anything new is often met with obstruction. Historically, clinicians and coders have not uh, interacted. I don't see this as a major issue, but it's one of the systems and things to be aware of in trying to open up channels of communication. Um, historically, clinicians and management often have different perspectives about things. Clinicians tend to focus about the individual patient rather than the big picture. And one of the main things that's come across, and I'm sure you that have been trying to engage people along the way like me, have not had the answers to give. And the frustration of trying to morph into a new system without having the answers uh, is often met as a barrier along the way. So in terms of engagement, education is therefore the key. And in the Sydney Local Health District, this isn't an easy feat. We've got about 6,000 clinicians that we need to engage along the way. So of this process, what part of it's new to clinicians? So we're pretty good at service provision, well, we think we are, um, and that area doesn't need focus at the moment. Where we probably need to focus the education is on the quality of documentation um, and, and learning the new coding language um, and, and fostering the collaboration with coders along the way to do that. That's going to require supervision of the junior staff that I mentioned are the ones that are actually doing this documentation. In terms of the things that are completely new to clinicians, understanding activity-based funding is obviously key. The coding staff interaction I've mentioned. Clinicians are very good at interpreting randomised clinical trials and statistics related to that, but not very good usually in interpreting financial reports. So this is a new skill that needs to be learned. Clinicians have sometimes had some input into funding allocation, but not to the extent that they will in the future. So this is another skill to learn how best to use these resources. <laughs> 